Sometimes smaller is bigger, less is more, and we're going to prove it to you with this very special Santa Cruz. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. My name is Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our Spring Store linked below for custom swag. Check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. Or uh, someone started GoFundMe so that Cooper can get this guitar. Would um, that I could. <laughs> it's a very cool Santa Cruz. We're a big fan of the builder, even though technically we aren't a dealer currently. Um, and we have already showed you some pre-owned uh, Santa Cruzes on this channel. This is another one that's very cool, but also a unique opportunity to not just highlight a builder, show you what a great guitar this is, but talk about kind of the power of a small body guitar where uh, bigger is not always better. And in fact, sometimes going small is the way to go. Yeah, um, my fatal flaw in this business is that anytime somebody says, do you guys do trades? I have a Santa Cruz. I say, stop right there. Let's do it. Uh, you probably shouldn't have said that because, yeah, if you have a Santa Cruz, you're probably going to get them out ahead on that trade. Give me a call, please. <laughs> when I hear the word Santa Cruz or Collings, I'm going off. You go weak in the knees. Yeah, and when somebody says, I have a Santa Cruz that I like to trade, I'm like, keep talking. And they're like, it's got Coca Bolo on back and sides. I'm like, let's go. Enough said. Right. Yeah, enough said. So <laughs> we got this guitar. It is a Triple O Sky model, um, a signature model of Santa Cruz for Eric Sky, jazz guitar player. And uh, it is one, beautiful. And I'm always a fan of a signature, signature guitar that does not overtly have like Jason Mraz's signature and, uh, you know, uh, Zodiac signs on the rosette. <laughs> you mean there's no Illuminati symbol? Yeah, we'll have Illuminati, Illuminati, you know what I'm saying. So, um, beautiful guitar that could truly be anybody's signature, but Eric and Santa Cruz put together something that any guitar player would freak out about. So this is an Adirondack spruce, Adirondack braced. Um, those two things are connected by hide glue. Um, Coca Bolo back and sides, and that's a really nice set of Coca Bolo. And I just so love it. Stripey. Yeah, really, really nice coloration. Um, and then a pretty old school kind of trim out, right? Mm -hmm. So Pyramid Bridge, Pyramid Bridge. Um, Herringbone, yep. and real simple rosette. I love a little teardrop guy, especially on a small body. Just the SCGC logo on the 12th fret. 14th and 15th fret, not the 12th fret, because this is a 12th fret guitar, so it's down there. And I read on the specs online, there's an extra dot at the 19th fret, because if you're playing a 12th fret guitar, you, know you need the... that 19th fret. <laughs> you need fret the dot. dot. Um, but yeah, slotted headstock, Waverly's with a nice kind of Ivoroid button, and then binding of grained Ivoroid all over the place. Really nice classic guitar like classic looking. It's also what I would like to call, that's a classic guitar. That's a know? classic. Not a classical, but it does have An a instant. wide nut. Yeah, so this is a one in 13 16 inch nut, which that's good for me. I like it, Just nice soft A little shy of two inches. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised it doesn't have a V neck and I'm- It does. It, it, it's is a that a soft, V? Soft it's a v. very soft yeah. V. It's kind of like a V that got smacked You can a few times. mainly just feel it down yeah, here right and it kind of flattens out, yeah. but uh, Really, really easy to play guitar. I think most people on this channel, there's a lot of people that say one and three quarters is gonna be too wide. Mm. I've heard a lot of people say that, what? okay? Um, people like 111 sixteenths. This is over that, but you gotta get one in your hands and play it because I think it depends a lot on the guitar and the neck shape. Um, this is very, very comfortable and uh, the sound is unreal. And of course, if you have an Addy top and Coca Bola back and sides, and you glue. should be expecting something to sound unreal. But why don't you talk a little bit about why this guitar sounds louder than uh, a lot of the dreadnoughts that we I'm gonna have. Do, I'm going to do two diatribes, if I will. Because you just- you Member just, of the tribe. You just activated something in me. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the neck real quick. Because um, we, we talk to customers all the time. Right, and I try to say this to everybody who comes in with a predetermined notion of what they want. 
And listen, I I was there with you once. I once thought what I need is a thin neck, right? Because we're both short kings over here, right? Neither of us has very, very large hands. And so I thought that I need a thin neck. Yeah. Um, no, it turns out I really like chunky necks. And I find that I'm more comfortable most of the time on there. In fact, to the point that this past weekend, I was playing my Strat, which has a nice thin modern C, and I forgot that a lot of the songs I was playing were in B flat that day. I was doing just bar chords all over the place. And by the end of the set, my hand was kind of cramping. I was getting one of these things, you know what I mean? The claw. <laughs> the claw. Don't focus on a singular measurement when you are trying to determine what guitar you think you like and will be comfortable to play. Because it's not the nut width. It's also not the neck shape. It's also not the neck thickness. It's also not the radius of the fingerboard. It's like all of these things along with the setup it's and the in action. It's your mind, man. It's a compound of stuff that your hand feels and your hand isn't thinking about it. It just knows what's comfortable. And you're thinking about it and sometimes you're overthinking. So that's all I'm gonna tell you. Get, in fact, I that's will tell you, stuff. we had a really uh, nice man come in our store the other day and purchase a guitar that he was not planning on purchasing because he liked it how it felt and played better than the guitar he intended to purchase, you know? And, yeah. But he thought he'd like this one based upon specs. What were the two guitars in question? It was a Martin CE-07 versus a uh, Gibson LG-2. And he left with the LG-2. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so cool. your mileage may vary. Don't write off guitars is my point. You're like, oh, that's a really wide nut, almost two inches, and it's, it's you know, this kind of soft V. It may be very, very comfortable. Yeah, yeah so. it is really comfortable. But let's talk about why small bodies yeah, are Yeah, give me the sound talk. So, it's physics. It's physics, baby. You are playing effectively a speaker box when you play an acoustic guitar, okay? It's physics. You are strumming a string that's vibrating the top. That top is vibrating the, it, you know, the body, and this is kind of the speaker box that's pushing out the sound through the sound hole. The bigger the top, the more energy you need in order to get it to move. So that's why we see on most big body guitars that it moves from like a light gauge of strings to a medium gauge of strings. The reason is to apply more tension to the top of that guitar, but you still need to get those strings moving. So if you are a person who is a strummer and you want a lot of volume and you're gonna be chopping wood, so to speak, on that guitar, then a big body guitar is gonna reward you with more potential volume. That's the key phrase, potential volume. But if you're like me or Cooper and you tend to play with a lighter touch, then a small body guitar will actually be louder. Because unless you are going to go ham on that big body guitar, if you're playing lightly, you're not moving enough energy to move enough air to really get the volume. And so played with a light touch, small guitar is louder. Yeah, like uh, Conway Twitty, I think, once said, you want a man with the slow hand. <laughs> you want a lover with the easy touch. There you go. Um, there you go. Yeah, this is what this guitar wants and the combo of Addy and Cocobolo. It's such a rich, loud, mm -hmm. but like so full and really, really nice sound. Well, you know what's cool about Cocobolo is it's like Rosewood, but it's got, so it's got all those overtones, but it's kind of got a tightened up bass response which is really cool. You get all of that bell-like chime. So on a guitar like this, just as you play, you know, you can yeah. really get in there with finger style stuff, or even if you're using a pick and, and doing some flat picking things, if you are not, you know, and you know, we say this all the time, if you're not fighting with a banjo player and a mandolin player, right? Yeah. We have amplification nowadays, people. And this guitar has a pickup. <laughs> it has a pickup. Like <laughs> the amount of times you actually need acoustic volume to compete is very, very rare unless you're in just some kind of like you know, round, you know, uh, bluegrass setting or something like that. You, yeah. You're going to be plugged in. So, yeah, a lot of times something like this is going to be better. Take a chance, pick it up, play it, understand how you play, and it might be better for you. Yep, that's good stuff. I got to play it. I loved playing it. So take a listen.
All right, so there you have it. Cooper laying down some luscious tones on <laughs> the Santa Cruz. The playing tones. lightly. Oh, I got to play light. I got to do a little bit of everything. You know, I find I play faster when I play lighter. Yeah. Yeah. So, you have a small body guitar. I do. I have an OM. Mm -hmm. uh, I got two OMs for my acoustics, and I love them. I, I go through phases, right? I think everybody does. And so, half of the time, I'm like, I need a terse guitar or like a single O12 fret, and I need to be like sting and like do this real like tasty. And then other times I'm like, I need the biggest guitar that I can find and I need to just rock. Um, but there's room for both, you know. This is the type of thing that I think is way more practical for like, if I was playing a solo gig, it, it's just such a good feeling to have a small body guitar that you can get really dynamic mm -hmm. with, you know. Um, and I, you know, Chris and I have both loved Santa Cruz for a really long time. so. Like I said, anytime we get the opportunity to trade for something or get one in the store, uh, it's been worth it. And this guitar is like what I think if we went to the factory and we were like, let's spec something out, that's the wood pairing that we would want to do. That's the look that we'd want to yeah. do. And so. Well, you know, I not that Eric, Eric Sky and I have a lot in common. He's an amazing player. But yeah, this checks off so many boxes that I would do. It's. The wood combination I'd go for, it's the kind of construction I'd go for. Hide glue, yes. Um, yeah, it checks off a lot of boxes. It's a wonderful guitar. I love a, a brand that's brave and uh, like self, has enough self confidence to build a guitar like this and not put their name on the head stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. That's it's one thing on the, you know, on the fingerboard that's a Santa Cruz logo. But just straight up, this is what it is. Just Coca Bolo on the head plate, no Santa Cruz logo. That's cool. Very cool guitar right? from a very cool builder that, again, we admire a lot. So if you want this guitar, this is, again, a pre owned guitar that we happen to have. Um, as you have already been, uh, have been made aware, and uh, Cooper's been found out. You can take full advantage of him, evidently, if you own a Santa Cruz guitar that you uh, want to find a new home for. Um, so make sure that you you know hit us up on that stuff. But if you are interested in making a home for this guitar or any other, other amazing pre-owned, we have a huge, amazing selection really of pre-owned cool guitars right now. right now. Yeah, you haven't even seen some of the stuff I've taken in recently. I saw you got a marquee in over there. Uh, or custom something? shop marquee, yeah. and yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, we've gotten some really cool stuff in. Um, the trade market is open. So if we have something that you really are into and you have something that we're really into, we're more than happy to work something out. Um, and yeah, I got back from vacation. I looked at the inventory <laughs> and I saw a bunch of cool stuff at the Babcock store and I was like, what? There we go. Strandberg? Um, yeah, <laughs> go, go on, Chris. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if anyone's looking for a custom uh, Mesa dual wreck with a 4x12, we're bringing amps back, baby. Come see me. Um, oh, man. You got to plug this bad boy into that, <laughs> you know? Turn it all the way up. Um, yeah. But uh, if you're looking for the softer in the spectrum, we have wonderful things like this. So you can check us out on our website. We have full photography. You can chat with someone about this at alamomusic.com. That's right. Um, and, you know, on that chat, like you said, if you have something where you want to trade something in, we are uh, willing to talk to you about anything and make it a win-win situation for everybody involved. If you like our channel, you like guitar stuff, you like geeking out about guitar, learning more about what would work best for you, that's why we exist here. So make sure that you subscribe, you turn on notifications, you like, you follow, you comment, you share, do all those things. We really appreciate it. And uh, we will keep coming back and making more videos for you. So we'll see you next time.